Buddy, buddy, buddy. Down to down to all the seats. So good, so good. I would like to extend my welcome to all of you to defense headquarters of the Guyana Defense Force here at Camp Ghana. I thank you for joining us on this very short notice. I sit before you here as the Chief of Staff to address a matter of great urgency. I have directed that we convene this press conference because I believe you play a very important role in our society and what we need to communicate when we need to and for you to propagate that message. This evening, I will speak to a particular issue that relates to one of our aircraft, uh, call sign 8 Romeo Alpha Yankee Romeo. It's one of the two uh, new Bell 412 aircraft that was on a command mission today under the command of Colonel Michael Shahood. Colonel Shahood is our, our commander for the 1st Infantry Battalion. He was on a mission to visit our troops on the western border. On that flight, we had the following persons. Brigadier retired Gary Beaton, Colonel Michael Shahood, Lieutenant Colonel Sean Welcome, Staff Sergeant Jason Khan, and the crew, that's the pilot and the engineer, Lieutenant Colonel Michael Charles, Lieutenant Andy O. Crawford, and Corporal Dwayne Johnson. The aircraft was en route to our borders. It landed at Olive Creek and refueled. Shortly after takeoff, we lost contact communication. An ELT signal, which is the emergency locator transmitter signal was emitted and has transmitted through satellite communication and to the aviation authorities. Whenever an ELT signal is emitted on any aircraft, it signals an issue. An ELT signal is triggered based on a crash landing hard impact or it can be triggered manually. I must tell you that the weather condition in the general area has been very um, not the best. Heavy overcast, raining, etc. The terrain is mountainous and heavily forested. On receipt of that ELT signal, it activated our analysis. We attempted to make contact with the aircraft and no 
communication was obtained. We immediately activated our search um, and rescue uh, process. This involves a number of things, coordination um, across our own services and also with the private sector. We had deployed our sky van with a search and rescue team from our special forces. And we also had the support of uh, Omni helicopters, um, which also supported the search efforts today. I, I wish to say that those efforts in the area by the use of the two aircraft I mentioned did not yield uh, what we were hoping for uh, because of the bad weather condition in the area. There are some photographs we are going to show you um, to give you an idea how difficult it was um, to actually flew in the area. It's on your... Yes. If you look to your right, this is the kind of um, weather conditions we had for the entire day. Search and rescue efforts has to be conducted in a safe manner. Having known the danger and the challenges of being in that area. So we want to ensure that the team exercise caution. It did not allow us anywhere to have a search and rescue intervention. To, to, to locate and to provide rescue uh, tasks. As the force, we are always concerned about the safety of our ranks, and this remains a priority for us to locate and save and secure our ranks. As the Chief of Staff, I remain optimistic on a number of uh, criteria. The officers on this aircraft are among our best. Lieutenant Colonel Mike Ch Michael Charles is no stranger to the public and certainly not to the force. With over four decades of flying and ex flying experience. Um, while we are analyzing all the information available to us, um, this event this incident, um, I'm sure, has generated um, additional anxiety uh, in this period that we are in. As a force, one of the obligations we have is to communicate to the relatives of the officers and ranks on that flight, which we did and we will continue to communicate with those family members. Our efforts to search will commence, re recommence in the morning. We have troops on the ground and we will uh, recommence those search efforts in the morning. I'm confident that what we would have gained today um, of the terrain and other um, data, we will have um, a better day tomorrow. I thank you for your time for being here and I will extend 
to you questions that you may have. Forgive me, I don't know your name, but um, I lack. Ladies and gentlemen, yeah. media, let's observe regular protocol. Mm -hmm. Your news agency and your name, please. Travis Chase, AGP 19 News. Sir, were you able to uh, confirm if anybody saw when the helicopter went down? What is your intelligence telling you that that actually probably happened? No, we don't have any um, reports of that. Uh, of that um, anyone seen the, the, the helicopter going down? Um, Gordon Mosley, near source. Uh, sir, could you say if the Ghana Defense Force received any reports of movement uh, with Venezuelan aircraft on that side of the border, on their side, during the course of the day, uh, close to the Ghana border areas? We do not have any information suggesting that there was any um, flight by Venezuelan aircraft in that area. Um, the location, as I mentioned, is uh, approximately 30 miles um, east of the border um, of the village called um, Arau. Yes. I start taking into account uh, all of the developments mm -hmm. that took place last evening, uh, what we heard from the Venezuelan president and from our own president late last night, and taking into account the weather conditions generally today, uh, did the GDF think it best uh, to send this team in with some as some of your more experienced persons into the area with all of that happening? What's the wise choice um, looking back? There's always a looking back, there's always a better opportunity to see all the decisions we made. But I tell you, as a force, every time we are deployed, there's an assessment done. There's a map analysis of our flight route and that was done and the decision to go into that area was a decision made um, by the persons who would have been assessing the safety of that flight well, it's a good question uh, mr mosley um, and i'm trusting the judgment the initiative the experience of those officers who would have planned and um, execute and conduct that flight um, that they made a decision that consider all safety parameters. Brigadier Danish Brogan Riley, sir, mm -hmm. could you say uh, whether that area is inhabited by anyone or is it uninhabited? That's my first question. Yes, it, it, is, it is not inhabited by um, persons. The closest we have um, location um, is the Kariku top, the Kariku bottom, where we have um, airstrip. Um, but it's in a general area where there is no um, inhabitants. Yeah. Uh, is it easily accessible by foot? Well, I will tell you, if it was, we would have been there. Um, it's heavy, heavily forested, mountainous, um, so it's not. Okay. Yes. So, 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 search and rescue um, mission would see us rappelling down into the jungle, um, and then search in the general area. Um, search and rescue, depending on the terrain, you would have the fixed aircraft flying over based on the location of the ELT signal, identifying the craft, then deploying the uh, rotor wing, which is the helicopter to have those ranks rappel down into the jungle. Um, so uh, has, has, have any troops been rappelled down in the area today or that was not yes. a, uh, possible due to the weather? That was the intention, but even that we could not have done um, based on the visibility, yes. So is the GDF uh, concerned at all uh, that this might be more than just an incident of a possible crash or impact. Uh, taking into account, this was a very experienced, 40 years, a very experienced pilot, knowing when to fly, how to fly in that specific area. Uh, is the GDF concerned that this might be something more than the aircraft going down because of an emergency? There's always a concern when something like this happens. Speculation is not what I want to go into. 
Um, but of course, we have other situations in a period like what we are having now, with our territorial integrity being threatened. There's many other things we can think about, um, which I would want not want to go into. But we are considering every possibility. Um, and right now, our priority is to find and save the lives of our officers and ranks. Has the GDF, quickly, last question from me. Has the GDF sought any assistance as yet uh, from the U.S. Southern Command uh, in terms of the search and rescue operations? Uh, there are reports that there have been U.S. military aircraft patrolling the skies over Guyana since the, this past weekend. Uh, well, I will tell you, incidentally, I had um, scheduled meetings today, several meetings, um, and our partners were updated um, on this search and rescue um, uh, mission that we had today. And the U.S. was informed, Brazil was informed, RSS was informed. And tomorrow, we'll see additional assets um, being deployed as is necessary. From the U.S. and your partners? Well, we'll have it from our partners. Sir, since we're on the issue of partners, do you know if we if we buy or do we get satellite photos from our friendly states to track any possible Venezuelan military incursion or so? Do you know? Well, I'm not too sure if, he's, if we are still on the... I want to stay on the search and rescue um, part of our press conference. Forgive me. All right. mm. Any other questions? Reference the operation. Brigadier, um, Chief of Staff, um, have you asked for a review of the safety records for the aircraft? And if so, what has it shown so far? I, I will tell you that's a good question. Um, I know the GCAA has activated their process um, um, and they are doing their work. We were. Um, we are meant to generate all the data, um, the manifest, the weight, um, the flight plan, etc. And all of that has been compiled and I believe submitted to the GCA. Were any reports brought to your attention about any problems with this aircraft? No. Since its acquisition? Aircraft always develop issues, issues that will not affect its flight, but may affect um, the, the air condition, um, other minor parts. Every time an aircraft goes up, it has the inspection and the certification of the engineer um, and also with the pilot. They have to be satisfied before they fly. Given the experience we have with our pilots, um, there was no reported um, in issue with that aircraft, that particular aircraft. This is one of the uh, two aircraft we acquired in the past um, two years. Yes. Yes. Levi Smith, Big Smith News Watch. Could you say, mm. Chief of Staff, if the aircraft is properly equipped with the mechanism to scramble any attempt to interfere with its um, communication and, and the sort of stuff? Properly equipped. The aircraft is properly equipped to fly. Um, our communication, um, there is a satellite phone on the aircraft other than its organic and indigenous communication set that it used to communicate with the um, flight control. There is a satellite um, phone on deck. We have not had any report of any interference um, relating to communication. But if you know the satellite phone communication depends on a clear um, sky. So that also could be an issue why we have not been hearing from them or we communicating to them. Yes. Are Sir, there any, any message uh, to the family of uh, those uh, soldiers on board? I know you said you're optimistic, but your demeanor doesn't say that. Uh, so. Uh, what message do you send to the family this evening and what message do you send to your soldiers in those bordering locations around Ettering Bank? Mm. Well, thank you for that, Mosley. But um, if your judgment of my 
demeanor is in any way um, your own interpretation i am um, i want my my officers safe um, that's my focus right now um, my troops on the border i would tell you their morale is high i would have been visiting almost every week along with other commanders and i will be visiting them soon um, but don't let my demeanor make you think otherwise. But what do you say to your troops? They must be concerned. A missing aircraft, they're in these border locations, the threats from Venezuela. Mm -hmm. What assurances can you give them tonight? You see, uh, let me deviate a bit and tell you. We are a different breed of people. When we wear this uniform, it brings a new meaning to life. The enlistment in any military is not a decision that anyone could make. As a matter of fact, this is the best decision that we could have made. There are three types of people, Mr. Mosley, for me as a military officer. Those who go through life not knowing what they're good at and never finding what they're good at. And they die. And then the second type, those who go through life and knowing the latter part of their lives, what they're good at, but they did not get the time enough to develop on it. And then there are those who in the early stage of their life understand what they want and what they're best at. And those people, all of them fall in the category of being a soldier. We live our life to serve and to protect the country that we serve. And I'm confident that every officer and every soldier is in that category. For me to tell them something to convince them that everything is okay, I can do that, but I know they're already there. Thank you. You have mm. assurance that the GDF helicopter was not taken out of the sky by Venezuela? We have no information to suggest that because we also had rescue mission in the same area. We had two aircraft flying in that same area. Thank you for your time. Thank you. And may you continue to serve like me, this country, this beautiful country.